Setting up a dedicated artist studio. Part 3. Studio lighting considerations, working studio examples and my studio construction. Firstly, lighting considerations for studio and display lighting design and systems. Ideally, the type of lighting required will be dependent on the type of artwork displayed or art medium used. Are you working with glass, paint, clay, wax, etc? What type of material or medium are you lighting? The material dictates the aesthetic and practical choices or considerations concerning light types and application. It is important to note that a lighting engineer can advise of lighting requirements and help develop a plan if required. Often larger specialist lighting companies will have a lighting engineer. An up-to-date electrician can also provide some much needed advice in this area. When choosing your studio lighting, there are several important areas of consideration. How intense will your lighting be? What colour or CRI, colour rendering index level, will you choose? and what lighting hardware will best suit your needs. As just mentioned, the CRI capacity, or colour rendering index, the scale from 1 to 100, is the way a light source affects how a colour is seen by the eye and interpretation of colour variations and shade by the eye. The higher the CRI, the more true the colour and shade interpretation or visual representation. A lower CRI gives less true colour representation and more colour and shade distortion. This is a particularly important consideration for artists producing in the studio workshop where correct colour interpretation and representation is vital to success of the finished artwork. It is also an important consideration for gallery display as poor lighting will not give a true aesthetic visual representation of the artworks. Colours must appear optimally true and vibrant. When choosing lighting, at least 85 CRI is required, but 90 and higher for optimal results. 90 to 95 is ideal. Low CRI will make colours appear washed out and dull and show the work in a poor light, literally and metaphorically. Going for a higher CRI will optimise viewing experience and make colours enlivened or zing. If you're a painter, you want to know the true colour that you're putting on your canvas in your studio. Next, you need to know the lux or lumen levels of your lights. So lux is the standardised measure of light level intensity, referred to as illumination. It enables the measurement of the total amount of visible light present and the intensity of the illumination on a surface. When professionally lighting the studio, you need to have sufficient lumens, a large enough capacity light, to successfully illuminate the work, but not so bright that it's lit up like a Christmas tree. However, you don't want it so weak that it's ineffectual. For a workshop setup and to eliminate dark spots, the suggested capacity is between 70 to 100 lumens per square foot. Workshop lighting will state its lumen capacity or Kelvin's capacity on the box. A good workshop light option is usually between 4,000 to 5,000 Kelvins. You may also like to consider a diffuser on your lights to diffuse the spread of light for more comfortable working conditions. Light is not so intense and distributed more evenly in your work area, thereby reducing eye strain from light exposure. Batten lights, fluoro and LED are often and traditionally used in workshop lighting. Though new LED light panel lights are an excellent option as they are wide flat panels that spread and diffuse the light over a broader area and sit higher on the ceiling. They also come in flush mount and recessed options. Track lighting is also an excellent option as you can change the direction, beam angle and intensity of the light. I will be using a combination of LED light panels and track lighting for my own personal studio needs. It is a good idea to purchase a small amount of track and one gallery track light to see if it suits your needs before committing to a big order. I personally have chosen track lighting for my front display area as I can change the beam angle, the beam length, the colour of the light and the light intensity all from the track lighting. Choosing track lighting also gives me the option to add more lights if I require in the future as they easily clip into the track system above. Lastly, I have chosen LED light panels for my studio work area as they emit a diffused light with a high CRI capacity over a broad working area. 
Closing this presentation will be examples of some of the other successful studio arrangements I have had the fortune of working in up to this point in my career. Currently you are viewing images of the University of South Australia's Art and Design Department Glass Studio and its plaster and mould making rooms. Note that light is well catered for, a movable exhaust system provided and there is ample benches and storage capacity for working requirements. Finally you will be viewing a glass hot shop where room to move safely, fire safety considerations and placement of equipment is imperative to the successful negotiation of the hot shop and the completion of glass work. These examples highlight the fact that a studio must be planned and meticulously organised to ensure success in your work ventures and your studio in general. This concludes part three of setting up a dedicated artist studio. I hope you will find this digital content informative and relevant to your own studio practice. Thank you for watching. Special mention to Simon Mundine, Director of LED World, for his invaluable information and resources on studio lighting. Thank you, Simon. This project has been funded by the Regional Arts Development Fund and the Fraser Coast Regional Council.